Hello and welcome to our three-part series on granular synthesis with the Tasty Chips Electronics GR1. In this three-part series we will explain the basics of granular synthesis, how to make granular patches with the GR1 and then we will take an extensive deep dive into the menu of the GR1 itself to help you understand all of its features so you can make the best granular patches yourself. Timestamps are included so you can easily skip around. Watch a specific topic if you are a bit more advanced or you can watch the whole series if you want to know every single detail the GR1 has to offer. If you are interested in the GR1 or if you have any further questions please head on over to tastychips.nl which will be linked down below in the description. We also have a user group on Facebook where we and our community can help you out with any questions that you may have. The group will also be linked down below. Now then let's get started with granular synthesis. Granular synthesis is the term used when an audio sample is played back not as a whole, but in many little slices of audio which are called grains. Grains are typically defined as a slice of audio with a given duration, ranging from 1 to 5 milliseconds, up to 100 milliseconds, and everything in between. But over time there have been many applications where longer grains are desired. For instance, in our GR1 we have implemented a maximum grain length of up to 5000 milliseconds. As you may have already noticed, granular synthesis is actually sample based. But we can still call it granular synthesis because the sample is processed into smaller components which are then used to synthesize a new sound. When a sample is cut up into little grains, it can cause pops and clicks if the audio is cut up at a non-zero crossing. To prevent these pops and clicks, grains are combined with an amplitude envelope to round off all the edges. This envelope is called the window envelope. The window envelope can be adjusted into different shapes, which allow grains to sound sharp and transient, smooth and continuous or give the illusion of a reversed sound. Obviously one single grain is not enough to create the full granular cloud that we are looking for. We actually need a lot of grains that will add up to a mass of sound. This is called density and can be controlled with the density parameter. The density parameter controls how fast grains will be launched per second, which will result in a low or high density. Together all those grains will overlap into a cloud of grains and will then reconstruct a new synthesized signal. Alright, now that we have a basic understanding of how to transform a sample with granular synthesis, let's have a look at the GR1 itself. At the top there is a 7 inch LCD display to follow along with all your actions in great detail. It also works great with the big slider underneath the display to directly influence the grain start position on the main screen. On the bottom left we have the menu controls to enter, exit and adjust settings in several system menus. We will cover these menu settings in part 3 of this video series. Over here we have the dual LFO section. Each LFO has its own frequency, amount, wave and destination. In the bottom right corner you can select 32 internal patches, which are split up into 4 banks that contain 8 patches each. Above the preset section we have the grain controls to adjust all the properties of the granular output. The density parameter controls the launch speed in hertz, or the number of grains per second. The maximum frequency of grains is 1024 grains per second. The grain size parameter adjusts the length of a grain in milliseconds. The minimum grain size is 5 milliseconds and the maximum grain size is 5004 milliseconds 
or 5 seconds roughly. The spray parameter controls the width of the area in which grains are launched from a certain position. Spray can be centered around the start position, which focuses all the grains on top of each other, or spray can be widespread, so grains will be launched in a randomized spraying pattern. The pitch parameter will adjust the overall pitch of the sound. The scan parameter behaves like an extra position which can scan automatically in a forward direction or in a backward direction at a given speed. Using shift and scan you can adjust the direction parameter. This allows you to set the direction of the grains themselves. Grains can move in a forward direction or in a backward direction from the start position or a mixture of both which can be set to any percent. The pan spray parameter is very similar to the spray parameter except pan spray randomizes the panning or focuses the panning properties. Then we have two FX knobs, FX1 and FX2. Initially they are assigned to a low pass filter cutoff and a resonance, but they can be assigned to other effect parameters using the patch menu. Up next are the amplitude controls, both for the window and the overall envelope of the voices. These amplitude envelopes are visualized at the top right corner of the screen. The ADSR envelope is shown at the top and the window envelope underneath. The ADSR envelope is the amplitude envelope of a voice when a note is held down until it is released. The window envelope shows how the amplitude of each grain looks and sounds like. Because the granular output is made up out of multiple simultaneous grains that spawn at a certain rate, you can picture all the grains and their windows encapsulated inside the envelope of a voice as long as the note is held down. And at the very top right corner we have the master out to adjust the overall audio output level. On the back of the GR1 we have a socket for the power supply unit, MIDI DIN in and through, four USB ports and a socket for a LAN network cable, one gate out and two CV ins, two unbalanced quarter inch jack outputs and a headphone with volume control. Now that we have covered all of the parameters of granular synthesis and the GR1, we need to take a look at another necessary component, the audio itself. Because we need an audio file to start with granular synthesis, let's talk about the properties of a sample that can work well with granular synthesis. One piece of granular advice that I keep in the back of my mind is, you will get back what you put in. So you are in charge of what quality means to you. If you pick a warm lo-fi tape recording for example, you will be given this quality in return. So the first consideration should be, what kind of color or timbre do I want to use? And second, how does that timbre develop over time? Let's listen to an example. In this example we hear that the color of the sound has a bright metallic timbre. But as the sound progresses, some of its high frequency harmonics will die out over time. So we can say that the tail end of the sound is more filtered than the beginning. Taking this into account can give us a gradual or instant filter without even using a filter later in the process. It also colors the granule sound more dynamically when using a wide spray. Another cool property to use in granular synthesis is the idea of wrapping. If the tail end of the sample correlates to the start of the sample, it has the ability to wrap around. 
This is really useful if you want long stretched out sounds that seem to involve indefinitely as it wraps around without a clear starting point. Samples that wrap around will also give the scan parameter its full potential, as the scan function literally scans the audio in a wrapping fashion with a given direction. The next consideration is tuning your audio samples to the key of C. If you are using a MIDI keyboard in combination with your GR1, it is a good practice to tune all your samples to C before using them in the GR1. This of course will align the tuning to correspond with any C on the keyboard, but it will also give you a full octave range on both ends of the pitch parameter, because you don't need to sacrifice the pitch parameter to tune any out of tune samples. Another thing to consider when using tonal samples is one shots, melodies and harmonies. One shots will always sound clean and in control when granularized, as there is no other tonal information that will interfere with the note that is already playing. Melodies are very interesting to granulize, as they may imply an underlying scale. Overlapping grains can create accidental harmonies that aren't yet present in the source material. Melodies that consist of roots, fourths and fifths will mostly generate a consonant output, even when transposing the root key. Harmonies can be beautiful to granulize. But when grains allow multiple chords to overlap, harmonies may clash with one another. The last two technical tips are mono and sample rate. Stereo samples will be converted to mono in the GR1, because this will give the granular pan spray more stability and amplitude if set to a wide pan spray. So if you want more control over your audio, export your samples to mono. The GR1 will also operate best with samples that are rendered at a sample rate of 44.1 kHz. If this is the case, no conversion is needed and the sample will preserve its original pitch. But if this is not the case, let's say the sample is rendered at 48 kHz, the GR1 will play back the sample slightly out of tune because the sample rates do not align with one another. If you want the GR1 to convert your samples to 44.1 kHz, toggle the setting called Load Sample Convert to 44.1 kHz to on in the performance menu. This is it for this video of a three part series. In the next video we will start making granular patches on the GR1. Thank you all for watching and we'll see you in the next video.